Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, in this video, we're going to fix up the skill roles. So in an earlier video, we created a rollable skill field and it was doing 2d6 plus the relevant skill. However, that's not actually um, how the skill works as a skill test. That's how it works in an, in an attack, but it's not how it works in a skill test. So in a skill test, you have to roll equal to or under your skill. Now, there will sometimes be modifiers and the modifiers don't adjust your role, they adjust the target. And that's not generally how Fantasy Grounds works. So we've had to do a little bit of extra coding to do that. So let's go and have a look at what we've got. So on our car sheet main, we have our skill frame, and then we have our max value, and we have our current value. And the only thing that really matters here is our current value. And if we scroll down, we can see I've changed the dice roll string just to 2d6 instead of 2d6 plus self. But I've also, and I've given a skill check description, um, I set the targeting type to all, but that's not actually needed. That was in one test version. So I can actually change that out um, because it's a skill check. We're not uh, opposing other people. We're just opposing um, our own skill. And then uh, roll description, just skill check. But the important part here is the result handler. So after the dice are thrown, and before anything is reported back to the chat window, we're going to run manager roles dot skill role. Now manager roles is a a Lua script file, and skill role is a function inside that role. So what will happen is two d six will get thrown, and that will be passed to this script as well as who threw it i.e. our character's name, and any targeting information. So we're not doing targeting in this one, but we are. We will send through the actor, and we will through send, send through the role, and we'll send it through to manager roles, skill role. So over here, I've created in our uh, tree, I've created a folder called scripts underneath campaign, because all these scripts are to do with uh, NPC or PC sheets, and we've created a script called manager roles, which is... Uh, what we've referenced here in our result handler and if we go to that I've already written up the script but we can see here we've got a script called skill role and I've it's receiving our source our target and our role from the dice roll okay the dice roll will always send that data even if say for example our target is nil um, it will still send three sets of data one of those will just be nil Okay, so we want to always, your functions in this script need to be accepting our source, our target, and our role. So we can see here, I've um, commented out all the functions uh, so that we we know what they are. So this is our function. Next, we're going to initialize a new message. Actions manager, create action message, action message using our source, so it's our actor, and our role, which is the uh, output of the role. Next, so that'll bring in things like skill role, which was from the car sheet main. Next thing we're going to do is identify our character node. So our source dot s creature node that will give us something like car sheet dot id dash double o three. Next, this is the script that I run just to ensure that an icon is always um, displayed in chat, even when the GM does the rolling. Uh, instead of displaying the GM's um, portrait or icon, um, this will still always display the um, player's one. So what we're doing here is we're getting token from no car, so car sheet dot id dash double o three dot token, and because that's actually the token reference, we're replacing the word here using G sub. We're searching that string s icon. We're searching it for the word token and replacing it with the word chat. And then we're setting this icon field uh, as the value for icon in our message. If I didn't do this, when a player rolled, it would give the correct one. But when the GM rolls, the GM's portrait appears. This matters more for this particular rule set because this particular rule set um, is quite probably going to be used uh, in some solo games as well. Um, advanced Fighting Fantasy, Fighting Fantasy's uh, roots were in solo gaming. All right, next we want to, because we're not getting letting our role capture the 
modifiers because we don't want to adjust the role. So I have not in my uh, role over here, we haven't used the modifier stack and we're not resetting the modifier stack. We're not doing any of these things from here. We're doing them all here in our script. So I'm capturing the de description. So every time you add, fill a slot in the modifier stack, you add two pieces of information, one a description and two is a numeric value. So we're getting the modifier stack and we're saving it as smod disk. So it's a string with a description and a number with the modifier. Next, I am getting the skill current score from our node car and capturing that as end target. Because we are not adjusting the role, uh, because the targeting information or the modifier information isn't being passed to the role, we have collected it using the modifier stack and we're adding it to our target. So instead of if our skill was seven and we, but, and we had a modifier of uh, plus two, instead of adding two to our role, we want to make our, our target nine. Our S target, uh, in this case, it's skill. It's a skill role. So this is just a string that we're starting to build up. S target is skill. And then I'm checking to see if mod description is three characters or longer. Uh, and that's because um, I can't check if it's nil um, because it, it always returns a value. Um, so if the description is at least three characters or longer than three characters, then I'm going to append this to this word. So we're going to have skill, uh, which you can see there's a space after skill. Then I'm going to append a hyphen and another space. Then the mod description, which might say something like throwing axe or law master or something like that. It might even be two. There might be law master comma library something like that and then I'm going to append a colon and a space so that's building up my string s target and that, that often takes multiple passes to get it to where you want it to be All right then I'm going to set a new variable called end result this is where we're going to store the results of the dice throw then for KV and I pairs, R roll to I, de, I dice, A dice. That means for each dice in turn. So R roll to I, A dice uh, is an array that contains all the information about each about each dice. So it'll say how many sides there were on the dice, what number came up on the dice, um, if the dice were a special color or not. Um, so it includes that sort of information. So end result which we've initially set as zero, will now equal its current value plus the result of the dice number k. So k will start at one for the first dice, then two for the second dice, and because we're always throwing two dice, there will only ever be k equals one and k equals two. So this will go around twice, and each time it will add the value from result to our, our variable name and result. So at the end of this, we'll have a result of, say, 6, 2 plus 4 equals 6, or uh, 5 plus 8, 5 plus 3, uh, giving us a result of 8. Then we are going to do some special case checks. So the first special case is when both die are 1s. If you roll two 1s, it's an automatic success. So what we're going to do, if R rolled to A dice 1, dot result is equal to 1 and our roll dot a dice 2 result is equal to 1 then we're going to take our current message text and we're going to add a new line then we're going to add a message saying double 1 success and then an open bracket and then our s target message which was up here something like skill plus any modifier descriptions if present Our next uh, specific case is where uh, dice 1 is equal to 6 and dice 2 is equal to 6. And then our message will be double 6, fail. And again, our um, description 
and the target value that we're aiming for. The next edge case or specific case will be uh, just a straight success. So in this case, if end result, which is the sum of our dice, is less than or equal to our target value, which is generally our our skill plus any modifiers. Um, so if our result is um, less than or equal to our target, then we're going to report a success. And again, we're going to report any modifiers and the target value. And then all other results, which is basically if it's um, greater than our target value and isn't a double six, then we're going to report a fail. We're going to build that message up. And then on that final line, we're actually sending this message to chat. So let's have a quick look at this in action. Fire up our character, and if we just roll a straight skill roll, uh, so we rolled two and a three, which is a five. So we can see our, our value here is a five, uh, and it's measuring against a skill of seven, and we're reporting a success. We might just roll a couple of those really quickly to see if we get a couple of different results. Uh, okay, we've got a fail there, so the nine is greater than our skill of seven, and will we be lucky enough to roll a double? one or a double six there we go double one so our message is actually says double one success and skill now the other variation is when we have a skill involved so we using the axe master skill we can see here there's a modifier of plus two and if we hover over the dot uh, so slot 1 is filled with Axe Master. So when we roll the skill now, we're still only rolling two dice. We're not adding any modifiers to the dice result. Still got a 4 and a 6 equals 10. But instead of our skill target being 7, our skill target is 9 because it's skill and Axe Master plus 2. So we get 9. And if in some particular situation, perhaps we had two modifiers, okay, uh, let's go the whole hog, right? So we've got three modifiers plus 4. We've got three slots filled. And when we roll this, <laughs> firstly we roll a double one, so it was a guaranteed success. But then we can also see here it's a skill roll, Law Master plus one, Survival plus one, Axe Master plus two, for a target value of 11, and we rolled a two, so we aced that one. Alright, so our next video is going to be very, very, very similar. It's going to be the luck one, and the difference in the luck roll will be that we have to then modify our luck our current luck score after we do the roll thanks for joining in